the next chapter we're going to study is optical instruments now you must have heard of optical instruments like a microscope a telescope even the human eye is an optical instrument so how do they all work and how can we solve IIT problems related to telescopes and microscopes that's what we're going to study in this chapter so let's begin the first thing we'll study is the human eye the eye actually consists of a lens and a retina these constitute the part of the eye which help us see the lens of the eye is called the cornea and it's a convex lens this is how you spell cornea cornea one interesting fact about the human eye is that you know the distance between the lens and the back part of the eye called the retina is fixed and another interesting part is that wherever an object is placed when it gets refracted through the eye lens its image is always formed on the retina so the image distance is fixed in case of a human eye so you know I may place an object here or I may place an object here or I may place an object here but the image of this object will always be formed on the retina so this distance is actually equal to V the image distance and this is fixed now if the image distance is fixed how is it that for different object distances we can still see the image at the same place the retina this is possible because u and f vary the object distance varies but the focal length of the eye lens can also be varied so remember the formula 1 by v minus 1 by u equal to 1 by f u and f vary in the case of an eye and v is constant now how does the focal length of the eye vary there are these muscles here you know here and here these muscles are called ciliary muscles ciliary now these muscles contract or they expand to change the focal length of the eye lens so when the object is far away okay then the rays on the eye lens you know they fall like this you know parallel to the principal axis and then a very big focal length will also do a lens with less power will also do because then you don't have to really make an effort to converge the rays they are parallel and you can converge the rays like this so the focal length when the object is at infinity it's high when the object comes closer and closer to the lens the lens has to become stronger it has to become more powerful and when the lens has greater power it has lesser focal length because it converges rays faster so when the object is brought nearer and nearer to the lens you know let's say when the object is brought here then the lens must have a lesser focal length and a greater power because in the same distance v here also you know the rays got converged in the distance v and even when the object has been brought closer to the lens in the same distance v the rays again have to converge like this so clearly these rays are diverging right and the rays will become more and more diverging as the object is brought closer and closer to the lens so the lens must become more and more powerful as the object keeps approaching the lens right and it's the ciliary muscles which contract you know to provide more power to the lens so you can say that initially you know when the object is placed at infinity the lens has a shape something like this and you know, as the object is brought closer the lens becomes fatter because its power increases you know and when you know you hold something very close to your eye that's when the ciliary muscles contract the most and the lens is almost circular you know like this now when the object is brought to a distance d a limit is reached because you know you can't decrease the focal length or increase the power of the lens infinitely you can't say that i'll bring an object one millimeter close to the eye and the ciliary muscles should so contract that the eye lens forms an image still on the retina after all if you bring an object here okay look at the rays you know they're diverging so much how can they be converged in such a short distance you know in this distance so there is a certain distance called d this distance d is called the least distance of distinct vision least distance of distinct vision this means that when you bring an object up till a distance d from the eye lens it's visible it's clear and its image is formed in the retina but if you bring the object closer than d no matter what you do 
the image of the object will not be formed on the retina because no matter how much the ciliary muscles contract you know they will just not be able to contract enough to make the lens powerful enough to make the rays converge at the retina up till d the rays converge at the re retina here this is the retina but when you get closer than d the rays converge after the retina like this so no matter what you do you will not see a clear image even you must have noticed it you know let's say you hold your finger in front of you and you keep bringing that finger closer to your eyes closer closer there will come a stage when no matter you know how hard you strain your eyes you cannot see the finger clearly this distance d varies with age for example for teenagers it's around 10 centimeters for people around the age of 40 years it's around 25 centimeters for people around the age of 50 years or 60 years it's around 40 centimeters so you know they say that old people cannot read small texts they cannot read books without spectacles that's because their least distance of distinct vision has increased so they can't even see an object that is 40 centimeters away from them clearly that is why their vision becomes weak another interesting point about the eye is that the image formed by the eye is always real and inverted it's at the retina and it's real and inverted as you can see here you know the inverted image you must remember this property so as you can see here as the object is brought closer and closer to the eye the size of the image here increases up till a distance d and d is the least distance of distinct vision let's have a look at an animation that will show you even more clearly how the eye forms an image so as you can see in this animation as the distance of the object from the eye is changed from infinity to d the eye keeps on you know expanding at the center and the size of the image keeps increasing have a look at it again as you can see the ciliary muscles are contracting the eye is getting bigger and bigger in terms of the power of its lens and the image size is also getting bigger and bigger up till a distance d centimeters and the image is being formed on the retina there you go now let's study about some defects in the eye the defects in the eye are mainly caused because the image is not formed in the retina due to some reason it's formed before the retina or it's formed after the retina let's first study about myopia a common defect in young people in this case the image is formed just before the retina that is the rays converge before the retina like this this generally happens because of over bulging of the eyeball you see the lens of the eye becomes so powerful that it converges the rays before the retina itself this defect is called as I just said myopia or short sightedness in myopia you cannot see far away objects clearly but you can see you know objects which are placed near your eye very clearly most young people as you already know you know have this defect and all of us wear glasses or we have contact lenses to correct this defect so how do glasses or contact lenses help correct myopia well you see if you had a concave lens here like this then that concave lens would diverge the converging rays just so much that you know the rays now meet at the retina so if you choose a concave lens of a specific power then you can make the rays converge at the retina so the corrective lens in case of myopia is a concave lens another interesting defect is when the rays converge after the retina this generally happens with old people you see the lens becomes weak and the ciliary muscles you know they become very weak so they lose their power to contract and you know increase the power of the lens so no matter how much they contract they're still not able to converge the rays at the retina they're too weak and because of the weak ciliary muscles you know there's difficulty in converging and the rays converge slowly you know after the retina this defect is called hypermetropia or farsightedness this is common in old people you see what actually happens in this case is that people cannot see things which are very near their eyes that's because you know when things are very near your eyes that's when the ciliary muscles have to be strong they have to converge those diverging rays from the object fast but that doesn't happen for old people and that's why you know hypermetropia is what old people suffer from so how can you correct hypermetropia or farsightedness you can do that by using a convex lens 
you see your ciliary muscles aren't strong enough so the convex lens will aid the ciliary muscles in converging the light rays and if you use a convex lens of the appropriate power it will converge the rays exactly at the retina there you go that's why you know when young people wear lenses and they cannot see far away things they say you know they have negative lenses because a concave lens is used and when old people wear lenses you know to read newspapers and to read things which are near them they have a positive power lens like they have powers like plus two plus three plus four because they use a convex lens so we've talked so much about the eye now let's solve a problem and make things more interesting